Hello YouTube, Flight Sim Guy here. I am back with the Flight of the Mad Dog Leonardo MD82. This time I'm back at my home airport at Jonglan International, formerly Port Columbus in Ohio. Today we're going to be talking about the Mad Dog's hydraulic systems. Alright, this is going to be a quick one. Let's go ahead and set the emergency brakes. And to aid with the discussion, let's go ahead and get the battery going and let's get the APU going start pump there and we'll wait for the APU to spool up all right we got a good APU light um, after this settles down this light should come on if this light doesn't come on within a few seconds after the APU starts there it goes right there all you need to do is cycle the APU generator all right Autopilot. all right we got juice going Let's talk about hydraulics. All right, so like other commercial aircraft, the MD-82 has redundant hydraulic systems. In fact, it has two hydraulic systems and they operate independently. You got the left and you got the right. Each system is powered by a mechanically driven pump in the engine, all right? And each system has a hydraulic reservoir of 17 US gallons of hydraulic fuel. Now, the left engine and the left hydraulic system powers a bunch of systems and the right hydraulic systems power a different set of systems and some systems can be powered by both left and right I know that's confusing but that's how it is so the left hydraulic system operates the left engine thrust reverser inboard flight spoilers elevator augmenter power slat drive mechanism outboard flap actuators both wings left and right wheel brakes left nose wheel steering actuator transfer hydraulic pump and ground spoiler both panels the right hydraulic system operates the right engine thrust reverser rudder power outboard flight spoilers rudder throw limiter slat drive mechanism the rear steer inboard flap actuator both wings left and right wheel brakes right nose wheel steering actuator transfer hydraulic pump and ground spoiler both panels okay you're with me all right so that's the left hydraulic system and the right hydraulic system now each engine is mechanically linked to the pump that generates a pressure of more than 3000 psi if you wanted to extend the life of the hydraulic system you can operate it at a lower pressure of 1500 psi and separate from the mechanically driven hydraulic pumps left and right in the engines there is also an auxiliary hydraulic pump which is electrically driven the electrical hydraulic pump is installed in the right system and is capable of providing continuous hydraulic fluid flow at 3000 psi all right so to review you have two mechanically driven pumps in the engines left and right each operate a bunch of independent systems and then there is an electrical one electrically driven pump that's into the right system all right now there's also a hydraulic transfer unit and what this does is it will connect the left and right hydraulic systems and enable hydraulic pressure to be transferred from the higher pressure system to the lower pressure system so that there is some redundancy between both systems all right enough of the academics let's check out the real stuff come to the co-pilot view move this out of the way and these four buttons right down here represent the hydraulic pumps now here you have your hydraulic pressure and you have your hydraulic quantity these right here are the hydraulic pumps for the engine remember the engine can operate at 3000 psi left and right it can also operate low which is 1500 psi all right obviously it's not doing anything now because the engines are not running turn these off let's come down lower now, as you may remember, there is an, ex an auxiliary hydraulic pump which lives in the right system, okay? When you turn that on, the pressure goes up to about 2,900 PSI and the fuel fluid quantity rises here, all right? If I turn the transfer on, it's going to go ahead and power up and equalize the hydraulic system. 
So now I'm powering both hydraulic systems with the single auxiliary or electrically driven hydraulic pump. Here's a fluid quantity left and right, and here's a pressure left and right. Now, let's go ahead and turn that off. So that's going to kill the left side very slowly. If I turn this off, it kills both. Let's go ahead and start her up and see how one engine driven pump operates. Alright, so to get this thing started, go to the overhead. Turn on the fuel pumps. Make sure we have bleed air. Turn off the AC. They're both off. Igniters on. Both. And make sure our pneumatic cross feeds are open. And let's go ahead and start the number two engine. And we're at 22. Okay, we have the right engine going, the number two engine going. And as you may recall from the electrical video, the right engine is now powering the bus. All right, now let's look at our hydraulics. No pressure, but we got fluid. Let's come over here. Move this out of the way. All right. If we turn on this pump, what happens? Nothing, because this is the left engine. Turn on the right pump. We're at low pressure. So it goes halfway, which is 16, or 1600 PSI. We want high, it goes all the way up. All right, the auxiliary is off, okay? So we only have one system going. If we want to get the other system going, I can turn on the transfer pump and I'll go ahead and equalize both systems. But in reality, you want to use the left engine hydraulic pump, but that's not running. So right now, both hydraulic systems are being powered by a single right engine hydraulic pump. Turn that off. Both of these are going to come on down. Turn on the auxiliary pump. The auxiliary pump is in the right system. So the right system is fully powered and fully fueled. But the left system is still draining down. You can equalize the left and right by turning on the transfer pump. That goes back up. And there. Now remember. The right engine operates some equipment. The left engine operates some equipment. Some equipment draws evenly on both engines. All right? It's kind of hard to remember which is which. What you want to shoot for is to make sure that both systems have maximum pressure and maximum uh, fluid. And that's it. That's all I have to say about the hydraulic system. Oh, just one more thing. Let's go ahead and turn off the pumps. Those are off. Let's go ahead and kill the engine. Okay, the engine is winding down. The only thing I have left to say is this. When you're on the ground, you do not want your hydraulic pressure to be on. Okay? If you're parked at the gate, you want none of your hydraulic systems on. And the reason for that is, when you're on the ground, when it's time to taxi away and the guy comes with the push cart, the, the uh, push cart and he connects it, and while he's pushing your back or he's getting ready to push your back, and you're in the cockpit and you bump the tiller, it's going to throw the push cart and whoever is on it, it's just going to take them and throw them across the ramp. And that's one of the reasons why when you're underground, you don't want your hydraulic system powered up. And that's all I have. Um, hope you guys found this video useful. My name is Flatsome Guy. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.